Hey guys, welcome into the Pucker Reborn channel. We are back with some more Blazing Deserts DLC. And today I want to be talking about the Gladiator run and my final thoughts and opinions on it. Before I go any farther though, I do want to say this. I have two things I want to tell you. Number one is this map seed. The map seed is right here. I'll pull it back up. This is an insane map seed for the Gladiator run. It's probably the best one I've found yet. The one that I've been running on for the 100 day has been very efficient it's been great i love that map uh, especially because of the recruits however this map here you have a port on each side so to get from any side you know you can do it in an instant if you're doing any quests up north you can use the port over here or over here to get up the canal here half almost halfway through the map, actually halfway through the map so you have a lot of range of play and this is, this is one of the best things you can have in a map is this little river thing that goes through with a bunch of towns at that. And the best part is not even just a bunch of towns, it's the fact that there's different towns. So if you mess relationships with them or these guys or these guys, whatever, you have instant access past them. So I just want to show you that. The next thing I want to get over to you guys here is the, the whole early, or not early access, giving away the DLC. I'm going to make a new deal for you guys. I am currently at the moment 483 subscribers. If I can get to 500 subscribers by tomorrow, let's say at Wednesday by 5 central, I will give away two more copies. That's a total of three copies going out the door to some people instead of just one. If I can hit that 500 mark, I will give you guys uh, two extra copies. So without further ado, let's dive in then and check out the gladiators actually let's start from right here so the gladiators are a group of well men that fight for their life they fight for the glory of the world the people the spectators to cheer for their name uh, the only thing is is that as a mercenary band instead of getting that glory hearing it they want it through crowns so one thing I'm going to tell you guys when you start this quest or when you start this quest when you start this campaign you're going to have 183 coins coming out of your pocket every day. That may not seem like that much at this point because of how good these gladiators actually are. But one of your best things that you can do starting out in the game is go to the arena. The arena is going to help you out so much. Taking on two nomads to the death or whatever, then you end up getting 740 crowns. It's instant and every single day you can do this. However, I will tell you... the what was said before was that the the quest would be or every five days the the enemy would get would get to its strongest and it's it's it scales every five days really um, <clears throat> the difficulty does scale pretty high I was facing one Lindworm I was facing five Nebuchadnezzars I call them Nebuchadnezzars Knackwisers or however you say it and one of them was the big one and then finally, one of the fights that I had, it was six, and there was two big ones. And I'm thinking to myself, how do you get them from not swallowing you and not causing more and all that stuff? I ended up defeating it <clears throat> by the nick of nothing, and God for nets. But uh, yeah, there's different ways to actually play this, and that to me is how you want to handle it, is, is by using your gladiators to get that money real quick. Excuse me one second. And so the gladiators are a tough run because of crowns. But I'll show you the day 100 the difference in that. However, let's dive into the actual players themselves. Each player is unique. They all have their own ability here. Glorious Resolve is the first one. Uh, Reroll every fa failed morale check uh, for a second chance. The next one here, which is kind of funny because this guy has uh, Irrational, which for morale checks, you either get plus 10 or, or negative 10. So it's kind of funny. Uh, but nonetheless, there's that. How, much, how noticeable was this? It wasn't that. It, it honestly wasn't that noticeable because there wasn't an icon telling me, hey, he's re-rolling this, this, this morale check. At least I wasn't looking for it, but I knew that it was super obvious with, with this guy over here, which we'll get to that in a second. Next one is Glorious Endurance. Uh, gains 5 damage reduction. Every hit taken up to 25 is a limit. I did not notice this one either. I can tell you that I wasn't looking for it because, I, again, the icons that would pop up, I, I couldn't tell if he was actually getting that. And usually when, you, when it's time for your brother to fight, that there's an icon that'll tell you, hey, this is the status effect going on. And it didn't end up doing that 
for this guy. So to know exactly, uh, I assume you'd have to actually click in and hover over this to see where he's at. But nonetheless, I this is still an amazing perk or trait or whatever you want to call it. But I just I personally I did not notice it that much. <clears throat> All right, so the next one here is going to be glorious quickness. Upon killing an enemy on their turn, this character immediately regains one action point. I noticed this, but I think it was because when you kill something, it pops up. It like floats up over his head, which was really nice because then I knew I could take a step and not just end my turn because I can't stab anybody anymore. But when I go up here, one thing I will tell you that synergizes greatly with this is Pathfinder. So if you guys are Pathfinder snobs, uh, this is a great perk because in any terrain you'll be able to take at least one more step providing you have uh, 2 AP. So definitely, definitely worth grabbing this. Now back to the, the full soldiers here. Each one is set up the same way in terms of their stars. The stats, random, they vary, but the, uh, but the stars are always the same. So the first guy, three stars melee, th two stars melee D, and fatigue two. You can see it here, hit points fatigue and you have your resolve each in different star placements and then finally the the more initiative or initiative built kind of guy here and that's melee skill your or sorry your uh, melee skill two stars melee d two stars and then finally initiative three so yeah i mean the stars are always in the same spot just different different type of uh ranging stats so here's the stat range i've i've reloaded the gladiator campaign a total of probably 15 times this map, I kept this one because it had the, it was the most intriguing to me. Uh, this one here, though, going into it, <clears throat> hit points range between 50 and 60. Fatigue ranges from 90 to 100. Resolve ranges from 40 to 50. Initiative ranges from 100 to 110. Skill or melee skill ranges, as far as I seen, it was 65 to 70. I never seen it get to 70, but I did see 69, so. Uh, range skill 40 to 50, and the melee and range skill defense is now uh, 7 to 13. So anybody who needs those stats, if you're wondering what those are, that's the, really what you're looking for. Now, <clears throat> being that all these guys are level 3, they are all going to be 61 crown wages daily. and. The survivability of this campaign is heavily off of how many crowns you're actually getting. There was many times as I was playing uh, that I thought, I don't know if I can even go that far north. I can't. I gotta stick around this patch of area because the you just blow through crowns. Now, a lot of the videos that you guys saw me make, I had about 3,000 to 10,000 crowns. The reason is because it's all buffers. So let's jump over to my other campaign and see what I'm talking about. So here we are, we have 10,000 crowns, but I'm blowing at day 100, and this was well beforehand, 641 crowns per day. So what does this tell us? Well, part of my run got messed up because as you saw in my last gameplay video, there was uh, one issue that I was having where I was not getting a task. It was killing my bottom line. It was literally killing my bottom line, and uh, <clears throat> it it just I could not I could not get quests that were 3,000 plus. I was getting 2,900. That was the highest, and that was more caravan rides. And I'm like, well, I'm gonna break even and make about a thousand crowns, so I'm gonna do it. That allowed me to go way north. Now, mind you, that allowed me to go way north. <sighs> Think about that. Otherwise, I'm doing quest after quest to get to the far north, and that's fine. Uh, another thing too is I was purposely going and taking on different uh, camps and stuff throughout the lands and that was the trading goods was helping out a lot as well. The trading goods are now quite a bit different. Uh, I can make a different video about that, about how they range. <clears throat> the Normally we all know that if it's over a hundred crowns more than what it's, what it's uh, sale price is, you're doing really good. But now it can jump up to 200 to 300 difference in crowns and a lot of that has to do with if a town needs something so just something interesting to think about but nonetheless with this with this campaign I ended up losing a bunch of brothers I took on two big quests at a time and they started dying now here was the final the final uh, deal here for these guys like one second 
So the final deal was like the Viper here, right? This build was massively helpful, <clears throat> and I'm sure there's a lot of other there's a lot of other builds that you can there's plenty other builds that you can do. The guy that I was building ended up dying in the last combat, and I wasn't gonna keep re-rolling it back and playing it over and over again. But this is what I ended up with at level 13. They are really solid brothers, guys. All around, <clears throat> they're great brothers. The gladiators, I would highly suggest people, if you're playing, to pick them up. I haven't had any events that were egregious, that were frustrating, that put down other soldiers where I was dealing with morale checks constantly. Uh, that part was really cool. And literally every, every one of these guys comes built differently. It's, it's absolutely amazing. The next thing here would be the lion. The lion was one of the other guys. I ended up making him a pole mate or a pole arms user on the front line. He was devastating. Oh, and I can show you this too, just because I'm sure some people might be interested. Uh, 99 days with the company, took part in 105 battles, 191 kills. This guy here, this is like just shows the devastation of them alone. And uh, yeah, he had 181 kills. And then this was the final guy right here, Sid the Bear. He died, came back, and was better for it. But no, 98 kills. Yeah, so I mean, <laughs> realistically, guys, there's just... A guy like this, I would rather have massive armor on. I didn't get to that point with him. But the, still, the, because of this ability here, the, the endurance that knocks down the damage that uh, is incoming. So that's how I would kind of build them all. Get that really heavy armor and just tank that's what it is but uh, nonetheless guys if I'm looking at it these guys at him at Sid being at level oh sorry that's the wrong guy here there we go uh, the bear okay so the bear is at 132 crowns daily this is what you're gonna be looking at when you buy these guys at level 11 as they get any higher than that <clears throat> you can see 136 and oops 140 at level 13 so yeah, I mean, I, gladiators are insanely high in their their coin. We all knew that. So what do you do to build out your, tw your 12 men? Well, I'd love to tell you get a hedge knight and everything, but you were going to have to wait until day 200 to start doing that because you want to establish yourself to your crowns. You wouldn't th you'd think that 10,000 was a lot. 16 more days, yeah, that's really nice. But it goes really quick. As long as you're consistent staying on top of it, it's not that big of a deal. Just like anything else, but at day 100, you gotta push the, you gotta push it, man. You gotta go take on heavier opponents. You need to take on the arena to keep the crowns ahead, and then you can start buying stuff. I bought uh, that named helm and was fine. I survived it, but I knew the map. I knew what I was doing. If you're brand new to the game, guys, I would suggest not doing this run. And the final thing. Uh, to this, it, oh, there's two more things. The, one of the things that I did was I was searching heavily for recruits like the day tailor. I had one day tailor that just ended up dying. In fact, I can go in here. I can show you guys. Yeah, so these are some of the guys that ended up dying. I think this was my day tailor right here. And he lasted for 71 days. Real solid brother. Uh, you're going to want to make an outfit of brothers that are lower end. I started buying the Nomads, and the Nomads come in at 37 uh, crowns. So, yeah, there's just different ways to do this. I just would say go for the Day Tailors, go for the Lessers to fill out your band until you get a good amount of crowns, then slowly start replacing those men. Uh, don't, uh, I w don't overdo it, but, um, but yeah, it's good to have a little bit of supporting cast with them, of course, unless you just want to go on just go on a rampage of just three guys you can definitely do that as well and i'm excited to see how people build that out the final thing i want to do is i want to talk to you about the comparison uh the comparisons to this is uh with uh the lone wolf run lone wolf run to me is oh man i want to say it's easier than this one it's not but it is and the reason for it is, is simply this. I, when I do the Lone Wolf run, I'll look for a Squire. And I love Squires. I think they're, they're, they're my favorite unit in the game. I think they have the best stats for the, the price that you can buy at a really low price of a Militiaman. And you can go with the Militiaman if you want. Or you can do the whole literal, I'm going to play a Lone Wolf out for a while and go from there. 
Uh, you can definitely do it, guys. I highly suggest doing it that way, however you, however you want, actually. But this thing is a little bit different because you're starting with three. Uh, you're starting with higher wages. You have to push it. You have to really push it to uh, to get ahead, especially early on. It can kind of each not not crazy early on. It's more like the middle of the road. Once you get to day 40 to 60, that's when you start feeling the pressure because the game is starting to adjust to you more than anything. And uh, yeah, the beasts in the south are more difficult too. So they will more they pack more of a punch, if you will. But, uh, but yeah, so Lone Wolf to me is an easier run just because you're not dealing with the crown issue and you can, make your, you can make your brothers however you want. Now there is something to be said about possibly getting rid of one of these brothers if you absolutely don't need them. I think some people would probably think you're crazy to do so, but in terms of the crowns, you're cutting down a third of your crowns. Uh, this, this could be cut down by a third. You know, or or even if it's 150 crowns less, you're at 500 crowns per day. It's more manageable at day 100, especially when you don't have backups and brothers are dying left and right. So that's kind of the deal. You're just, uh, it's just a different, uh, it's a different way to play. So if you're new to the game, I wouldn't quite do this one yet. Get used to it. Figure out how you want to ta attack a lot of things, and kind of go from there. Any other comments or anything? Um, Pick a good map, use the arena, and hire smaller recruits, and then slowly replace them. That's all I got for you guys. I'm going to officially start diving into the Manhunter run now. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoy that. I've heard it's been kind of a pain in the butt from streamers, and I've heard it from you guys as well. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. Don't forget, 500 subs, and I will give away two more copies. That's three total. I got quite a list going here, and I would love to give away more than just the one. So, without further ado, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!